Hi everyone, welcome back to the Academia podcast, where we talk about all things architecture. Today's episode is about the transition into employment after your degree show. I'm back as always with Adam Morgan and Jack Johnson, and we'll be talking you through that stuff today. So, to kick us off, sorry, I was going to reach for my notes then. Um, to kick us off uh, and get get straight into it, talk about some of your experiences of coming to the end of of the academic year and your final year of, of before part one and part two, and, uh, and and getting stuck into that degree show. Go on. Well, <laughs> it was starting with degree. Mine was a horrendous experience because a valuable lesson was born from it, wasn't it, Adam? Where. <laughs> Yeah. My computer crashed and I I hadn't backed my work up, so I lost everything. So I, I basically, it was about two weeks before and I lost everything. So What did you it, do? I forgot. I think... Um, you presented something, didn't you, in the end? So. In the end, we had to go back in the trenches and I just had to like... I, I obviously knew the design and stuff and that was a lot of the thinking. Yeah. A lot of the thinking is the time consuming stuff, so... I, I was at a journey, a point on the journey where I knew where I was at, but yeah, I just had to do it. And then I think in conjunction with that, um, someone in my mum's work, a husband worked for like the forensic police. So we managed to then salvage wow. the old one. Oh, look it, at it was you. like proper CSI shit. <laughs> he, he managed to salvage. Did you come with me to that? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that. Uh, that he he that managed to, to salvage it. So then... I then got some stuff back, but I was sort of near enough up to where I was anyway by that yeah, point. Yeah, so yeah. the lesson from it is always back your work up every 10 minutes to multiple <laughs> medias, <laughs> to Dropbox, to an external and to your computer. Yeah. He's got about 12 external hard drives, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> um, you must have had something. Did you have anything on email or anything like that? No, no. So you just started again, two yeah. weeks left, started again. Wow. I suppose um, you had, as you say, you had it Still all. Still got a two one as well, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had it. You had it all up top, though, didn't you? In terms of you, you had resolved your design. Yeah. You'd resolved your boards and stuff like that. But you had to re recreate. But, but them. the presentation was probably a month behind where it should have been at that point. So, mm -hmm. you, when you look at it, you're like, oh, it looked okay on that on the wall. But if I'd if it hadn't happened, I'd have refined. Yeah. And refined and refined and. Me, me, end the year stuff would have been a lot more comprehensive, but I still got a two one. I don't, don't know how. <laughs> no, I'm still, still, I'm still a good piece of work. That's why the the design is still the most important thing. Um, I used to do volume. I used to just do like twenty boards <laughs> of just crap. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I, I remember a tutor said that your presentation is only as strong as the weakest part of it. And and he he, he literally said. You'd have scored higher if you'd have just done three boards there, cut all that out, and yeah. really focused on it. So my my degree show presentation was more condensed than than I'd probably normally done. Yeah, um, and I was dead decisive on cutting visuals out, drawings out. I was terrible for showing. If I had like a plant room door at the back, I'd show it. I'd show a visual of it or something, or a drawing yeah, yeah. of it, or or what have you. And I, I just got into that real ruthless rhythm of. Um, is the visual any good? I might have started with 30 and ended up with five. You're on, only on as the... good as your weakest drawer on aren't you? I've just said that. All right. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say it as comprehensively hey, no, as no, I not just not have. A, not, a, not, a, not a snazzy. You took about Pay 10 minutes. Pay attention to the look at yourself on the camera. <laughs> so what's going on? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so, so I, went to, I went to the process of cutting stuff down, cutting boards out completely. And it, it, it was just such a good thing to get into the habit of because... It looked strong then as a result. Yeah. And um, I think I ended up with about six boards, I think. I think the middle three were like the visual design. And then you do, you have a little go at a bit of detail and don't get around the sides and, mm. and what have you. And then I made sure I had something in front as well. Just something to, you know, just make people walk around it or or, or what have you. I don't know, we'll we'll touch on that as a bit of a, a, bit of a tip in a bit. But um, just made sure there was something in front of it as well. So it was a bit of 3D, you know what I mean? Something you could pick yeah, up and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and what have you. And um, yeah, mine went a lot smoother than his. I think my methodology, <laughs> methodology had to change as a result because Adam had three times the amount of stuff he needed. So he, he could really refine and curate what he was doing. Whereas 
I just needed enough stuff to fill the <laughs> yeah, presentation. Yeah, yeah. It was the opposite. We basically yeah. opposite ends. Yeah. We were kind of met in the I middle. I was like, fucking hell, what am I putting here? And yeah. so I had to, I had to really have the presentation in my head at that point what I was doing because yeah. I didn't have the luxury of chopping stuff out. And, yeah. Gonna have to make this one explicit on Spotify as well. That's twice he's sworn already. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you, do, you have to tell Spotify. Yeah. yeah. So I'll have to know. <laughs> it's you, an adult you, podcast, isn't it? Yeah, Everyone's yeah. already. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's eighteen. Yeah. Um, in terms of like more of a feeling, then so ahead of the degree show, obviously there's still a lot of pressure on getting your presentation right and and, and what's to come. Everyone essentially, you, you know, you're, you're putting it out to the grand jury, aren't you? Everyone sees your work at this point, and plus and external you, examiners, and, and you're putting your well. best foot. The public. Tree. You're always worried about yeah. putting your best work forward, as you've just touched on. But just in terms of like, we is ready for the rest. You know, like at, at, at that time, are you knackered? You know, what will it, what will the students out there be feeling now? You know, coming up to the degree show. Tired, but just trying to get no, to get they'll to get just be up. in a zone at the minute where they won't have time to come so up. You for guys air, didn't so. feel like that, you were still like mega focused, mega like you, I need to get this right. it's, it's, adrenaline just it's, got you it's, through it's, it. it's like running like coke noodles, like running yeah, yeah, a, yeah, a 10k or a half marathon. You're running and you're running, it's only when you stop that yeah. you go, Shh, I'm tired and I'm out of breath. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need, to, <laughs> nearly, need nearly to not swear. My mum's told me about swearing on this. That was a comment she had. <laughs> and and yet yeah, the twins watch it, so I can't yeah. swear. That, but but you, you, the main point there that I took from what you just said is, it's only after you finish a run, like a long distance run, um, which we done this morning, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Get that in good, good, yeah, yeah, good, you know, healthy body and all that. Um, but after a long distance run, it is only after you finish you re, you, you kind of realise the impacts of it. And in the running, you know, you know what? If I could be dead honest, you, you do look back. I look back with a bit of fondness. Because you just, you just, you got loads of freedom. You're in the trenches. Yeah, you had a lovely time, though, didn't you? <laughs> I, I, I was watching you going, as usual. I'm intimidated because he, he could do three presentations, and I haven't even drew a set of floor plans. No, yet. no, no. So fair enough, fair enough. But what I mean is, there is, there is. When you look back on it, we probably didn't feel it at the time. When you look back on it, you go. You know, we 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 were we were we were our own boss. We were more yeah. our own boss then than we are now. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. love to do it now. Yeah, I'd, you know, I'd, well, yeah. it'd be amazing now. But so so you're under pressure and stuff. But all your peers are all in the same boat. So there's there's loads of camaraderie in the studio and all that sort of stuff. So it's not all bad, you know. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you, yeah. You, you get you don't get a lot of sleep and all that stuff, and it is stressful. But you know what? Not enough is said, and and we have touched on this. Um, in in our in our mini rehearsals, that we we do want to bring a little bit of inspiration to some of these podcasts now, don't we? And it's not all bad. Even the I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to glorify the 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 toxic work ethic. But what I'm saying is there is there is a bit of there is some good in there. You know mm. where you're all in it together. If you get a good year, and we did, we had a very good year where we were very together. We all fought for certain issues together. You know for the year, we fought for like more time. You know what I mean? And stuff yeah. like, it was great. You know what I mean? So, so when when you're in the running, you know, I I was bringing in. Um, we had some really good friends, obviously, in our year, and I was bringing them around, saying, "What do you think of this? What do you think?" Of? And then we were helping them with some of theirs, you know, critique yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So there's a buzz as well. You're like brothers in arms, in effect, because you're all in in it together. And it's sad because you don't actually see any of them now, do you? I, I, yeah, and no, yeah. There's yeah. only a handful you keep in touch yeah. with and stuff. Yeah, and but, yeah, for no particular reason as well. It's just. When, Life, when when you're pinning it? that work up, is there a real sense of accomplishment? So, you know, just quickly oh. taking it back to that runner's analogy, you know, 10K or, two, you know, even half marathons and whatever, the can be grueling while you're going through them. But as soon as you hit that finish line, you're always, every single yeah, time, yeah. you're so happy you've done it. Is it the same when you're pinning that work up? But you're just like, even though the, the, the you know the people haven't seen it yet or whatever, just, you, you feel like, I've done it. You know, this is it. Here's yeah. my presentation. Mm -hmm. Or... Oh, you're still at that point really nervous about like because as you say, external people come in, and we'll touch on this very shortly. But um, new, you know, potential employers are coming in. So the practices that are in your local area, the directors are coming in to, to look at the new talent. You're obviously in that pool. They're going to be looking at it. Are you still nervous about that type of stuff, or is your mind at that point? If you can Mine remember, wasn't on that at that stage. You were just Mine like, just I've done it. Relief had got it up and. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I think you know you've passed as well, don't you? Because they don't let you. <laughs> there was a point in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <come on. laughs> they don't let you pin up, do they? If you failed, so 
by very virtue of the fact you're allowed to pin up, you my shot. Me- my memory's awful, yeah. Because uh, I think I yeah. might just be making it up. No, no, I, I, I'm not sure. There was something. I remember there was a. I won't mention names, but there was a lady in our year who scored very low. I remember she did get pulled in for a chat. I do remember that before. And I, I, that, maybe that's what you're on about. Maybe it was a. You're probably best hanging on. Or still invited to the I'm degree not, show. I, I forget now. I forget. But I, but just if Jack's right, if he, if, if you know, if we're remembering it right, I do remember one or two people who who, who were scoring very very low. Um, I remember them getting pulled in for a bit of a conversation before. I don't know whether they got to pin up. I'm not sure, but I do remember a bit of a conversation. Yeah. But to answer your question, though, um, yeah, you don't really care about the next steps. You pin it up. You you, you you're knackered. You, 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 your fingers are in bits because you, you, you've been cutting them with a scalpel or you know just glue all over them and stuff because you've been building little models and all that. And you just look at it and go, you know what? My my recollection of it was, I thought, I can do no more now. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's no better feeling than that in a way in terms of it's, yeah, you it's, win or lose as long as you, as long as you you've look left and go, it all no out more. there. So. Yeah, That's yeah, it. yeah. That's it. That was, that, my, that that was, was where my biggest regret was because I had a bit of it. Taken out away from me. It's a yeah, bit like did. therapy for me. This. Yeah. So I I didn't leave it all out there because I couldn't because of what happened. Yeah. I didn't back me work up, so yeah. it's my own fault. And yeah. I was won't harsh. do was it again. Harsh. Yeah. Um. So then, obviously, we're going to be attending our local degree show. So uh, in Liverpool, we've got Liverpool John Moores University and Liverpool Uni. We'll be going so to yeah, those. So at the time of recording, we're a week off, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. So, Which is so we're very close to, to attending those. Uh, where again, you know, as uh, we've got, we wear two hats at these things now. We wear a hat as academia directors and and, and and everything that we're doing with this platform. But then we also wear our studio RBA hats as directors, where we're looking at the next generation of talent, potentially for trying to recruit them. Mm-hmm. So. We're going there as employers and we know what we'll be looking for, but just explain a little bit to you know, our, our listeners. What, what what are you looking for when, when you go and attend and, and, and what how should they prepare for that? And I know you guys said you weren't really, at the time, you weren't preparing to meet employers and, and, and giving them a pitch. But if there are people that are, you know, sh- should they be? Prepared right now to, no, to I think, start I think we were a no, little no, bit. No, that's, so that's... so there's just so, no, no. So you are right in terms of you. You asked us the question about were we thinking about that? No, we weren't at the point of pin up, but you get a. I think you, you get a better degree. Space, degree you, between... shows like a week or so later. So yeah. then, so by you that then point, prepare. do you get an attendees list at all? So you maybe know what practices are attending, no, or is it more like the public? Where so, yeah. the mouth and, and you don't really know who's coming. It's where the mouth. I think I, I think the choosers give you an impression of who might turn up. Yeah. If you're doing very well, and this is a clue, um, tutors start to line you up. Oh, so tutors will actually reach out to businesses, yeah. architects in the yeah. area and say, we've got this student here, it'd be perfect for your practice. Yes, yeah, there's a bit of that. And, you know, I think opinion is split on that because that's that's not fair, is it, strictly speaking. Mm-hmm. But equally, I think, all in all, if, if, if they're in the top 10% of the year anyway, It'll, it, that will come to be, you yeah. know what I mean. So I'm I'm fifty fifty on it, whether yeah. it's fair or not. But did you, so did you pre- you prepare? Well, we we both prepared. We always helped each other. Didn't we? we both prepared. What's your memory of it in terms of preparing for the actual day of it? I think I think we then we we obviously pinned up, got our results and that. Oh no, the no, results no. the results are a the week resu- later. The results so we, were the we, day we, of it, weren't we? We pinned up bizarre. and then you do your your final ever crit with the external examiners. Then you sort of you decompress because you're done, and then we went away and made like brochures of our work, so and business cards, so people could like take copies and and stuff. And as, a, as a as a direct attempt to get yourself yeah, a job, yeah, to, yeah. That that is yeah, purely yeah. just for you know the architecture practices coming in. You're saying, okay, here's my portfolio, essentially in this little yeah. brochure that I've done, and and is is a business card with me detail. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very very mini pitch. It yeah. is. So yeah. you did prepare. You, you you guys were prepared for. And and you you tend to. We touched on this. It's it's good to know who's who in the local industry because there's a lot of people there from practices who are just blowing smoke up their own ass, and they've got absolutely no power to give you a job, but they'll make out your half. And th- there was certain guys who used to appear every year, wasn't there? Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, "Oh yeah, I'll take your card and stuff." And it it, it 
it was a massive waste of time. They, yeah. I don't know why they do it. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, we'll, we'll find out next week. Maybe we keep our eyes peeled. Not for that, yeah. not for those people we're talking about, but maybe keep our eyes peeled for, for that going on. Because I think now, as you say, we're not academia hats. We probably need to pay more attention to these things and hopefully just relay that to everyone, really. Yeah. And, and what Jack's getting at there is the. There were these time wasters who were like, they might have been qualified architects, but not very experienced. They were never seen yet. And they used to go around. It was a bit of a bit of a, a bit of a tri- a bit of a ego trip for them where they'd go around. And I think in architecture, more than most really, someone who's on the next step in the journey is godlike almost. Yeah. You, you yeah. know what I mean? So you, when you're in your degree, you go, oh, look at them doing the masters, you know, yeah. and then so on and so on. It always does that. So if you're on your degree or your, or your masters, and we, we should touch on the difference, by the way, between the degree show and the, the master show, if you like. Um, either way, it's the same sort of setup. And these people, they give you the impression that they're going to give you the job. It's, and they monopolise like a lot of your time where you could be like, focusing it with people who... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this this is a very important point because obviously to the listeners and, and the members we've got who, who are facing this coming up, the point is... Because it's it's hard to legislate because you don't you, if you don't know who's approaching you, you don't know who's the mm. time wasting who's not. So the point you're making is find some of the practices that you'd like to work for. Go on the the team portion of their website per se and figure out who the directors are because they're the only ones really who can directly give out the jobs or maybe senior associates. Maybe yeah, yeah, associate yeah, yeah. You know yeah, yeah, what yeah. I'd actually do now with hindsight, and it's sort of just coming to me. If I if I was a lot more confident in what I was putting out there was good and more results. So I'm Adam in this scenario. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> I'd probably make a personalised invite to the directors or the practices that I wanted to see my work. Yeah, that's nice. And I, I would make... So he, like in John Moore's, the head of the school does that anyway. He invites everyone. But if you do that personally, I, I, I think that I'd be impressed by that if someone emailed me directly and said... Looking forward to seeing you at the degree show, you know, and I can't I'd wait. I'd love to, to show you my yeah, way. Yeah. I'd love to show you what I'm about. Yeah, and all that. And sort of it, stuff. It, it's it's probably a good way to yeah, you know, really focus your attention. And then if they come, you know, oh, he's responded to my email by virtue of the fact he's turned up, and yeah. you know, it's a quality conversation you're going to have with them and stuff. And yeah, yeah, you know, you know what that re- makes me think of as well, though. The, the the potential of um, actually uh, jeopardising a, a genuine opportunity. So we're saying there are time wasters, but there's time wasters in all walks of life. There are time wasters for us now, isn't there, when we get an inquiry and they've never really, they're never really serious. They might be using us to make up the numbers and all that sort of stuff. So there's always time wasters. I think number one, a fundamental point is still take everyone seriously. Even yeah. if you suspect them of being a, a time waster, because they mightn't be. So definitely take them seriously. But then to not dilute your time, try and almost prepare a, 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 a timed sort of pitch in your head, a little five-minute pitch. And then if you can then give that pitch consistently, you'll probably get through more. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You get through more people. Yeah. Whereas, as Jack's saying there, some of the time wasters are the the best or worst, if you look at it, are actually draining a lot of time from you as well. So if you can just say, there's my pitch. Yeah. Do one now, you know, so yeah. like, in a way, in a polite I think, way. I think you only know this as well. So it's, a, it's it's probably a hard point to know when you're in the scenario, but you only know it years later when you like you speak to people above them in the business and you're like, oh, such and such was there from your business, giving business cards out, offering jobs. And they're like, was he? Yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. type of scenario. And yeah, it's like, yeah. well, he, sh- he shouldn't have been because we haven't got any jobs in that role. It, no, it, no, it, exactly. It, it's it, 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 so not to be unfair on these people who do it, it, it it's based on hindsight that we've then Figured spoken out. to people further up in the business who've said, yeah, no, I don't know what they're doing that for. And, and, that, yeah. and that's my point about at the point in time, you would just never know. Yeah, yeah. So you've just got to got to just be a bit more selective with your time, create a pitch, you know, allow for a little bit of, a, a bit of questions. And then, you know, it's a difficult one. You can't, you can't invite someone to go away, obviously. But I think... I think if you, it, the way you present, if you bring the, it to a close, I think generally yeah. you'll be able to get through a lot more. Yeah. So then just to take it back to a point that you've just made, just while we're in this segment of the pod, uh, talking about the degree show, the master's show then. So do you want to explain a little bit more about, about the key differences really between the two? 
Yes, yeah, the key difference was my, my work was good this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but I mean, he had, more... he had a good, he had a good three months then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so your own experiences, but more generally, you know, for the listeners and 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 and, and our it was a lot more of an intense period. So, although it was, the degree was intense for me, and by virtue of the fact that I was chasing my tail because I didn't have a lot to show. The the the, ma- the masters the scale of projects stepped up, didn't it? It was it was a bigger beast than yeah. It was more ground to cover. Yeah, we, yeah, we found we were we were we were like staying awake for like long periods of time, which probably wasn't productive with hindsight. But mm. y- you do it, and people will be doing it. And it, it 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 it's it is accepted, isn't it? That the last slog is always the hard one but we always touch on this and we say you know it, it's not the right thing to do you know keeping yourself up for you know 20 hours of the day yeah. and stuff and, and doing the work it's definitely not the right thing to do you plan your time better and organize yourself mm. better that's always the best way to do it but one thing i do want to say is we touched earlier on the sense of achievement that you get yeah i think sometimes what goes unnoticed is you feel more of a sense of achievement for what you have been through in your degree sometimes. You're yeah, saying there, there yeah. definitely will be people out there who are listening who have been doing them 20-hour yeah. sessions as well because you're so fanatical about your work almost, aren't you? Yeah. And you're double-checking yourself. You're always constantly going over things, changing little things and stuff. But I, I do think that there's also, when you finally finish and you look back on that, there is sometimes a bigger sense of achievement because you have been through the yeah. trenches of it like as well, isn't it? And, 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 and longer hours are unavoidable when it comes to a deadline. You always need another week. Yeah. No, if you if, if you had six or 10 weeks, you always need the, the seventh or the 11th week. <laughs> yeah. You always need it. So there's always that ramp up anyway. So it's it's inevitable, really. I, th- I think we covered it in one of the earlier podcasts where we said you never finish. So just pick a point yeah. and say, I'm done now. And that's that, that, so that, that that's a brilliant point about being decisive. What is it? Perfectionism gets in the way of progress, um, and perfectionism isn't about something being perfect. Perfectionism is about never settling. In my in my opinion, it's about never settling. If the font is a, a, a point ten or point eleven, it's not really relevant. You know what mm. I mean? You, you can tinker and tinker and tinker. Be decisive. But the but my thing my thing that I want people to take away from the be more organized and less frantic and stuff is if 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 you're bet if you're more well rested and you put 10 hours in rested and you're putting 20 hours in knackered you'll get more from the 10 hours when you're rested in terms of I think productivity and quality mm-hmm. that's the thing in retrospect we we should have gave I th- I think you you were better than most to be fair in terms of you you knew days when you weren't at it didn't you you had days where yeah. we had group work and he'd just walk out and go uh, you know what I'm not racist today but I'll be at it tomorrow yeah, yeah. and then and then and then you know somebody does be going oh, what was he getting off for and I said no no no, no watch what he brings tomorrow yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. he wouldn't he, you know he, 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 temperamental he'd say, aren't I it, it, well <laughs> no but it's listening to your body that you know like some yeah, people are better at it than others other people will just keep going through the brick wall and, and not really Realize that the, the burnt out, but I think that that, that again that's and a you're big making part spelling of errors and everything. You know what I mean? You just all over. We've got to recognise those signs. I'm doing it in work, and obviously you break. sit next to me, so you see it. So I'll be sitting trying to work something out for like the whole afternoon, and I say this will take me ten minutes in the morning, yeah. and it, more often than not, that yeah. that's true. That's yeah. exactly my point. That's yeah. exactly. Whereas at half four, I'm still having a go at it. Yeah, I'm just yeah. making a mess of it. You, yeah, you'll yeah. like battle it, won't you? Longer yeah. than me. I think because with you, you, you want the task finished, don't you? You want you you I hate, try and keep it within the day. You hate tasks that drift because then you feel like it's getting in the way and stuff to, the next day, don't you? So you like to always doesn't matter how late you have to finish. You just want it done, don't you? So it's off the plate type of thing. But yeah, but each is as effective, as, and and you end up where where you end up, don't you? At the end of the day, you know, but, I, I say, listen to your own body, listen to your style, and all that sort of stuff. But um, we haven't answered your question. Of yeah, yeah. Difference. So take it back. Yeah. <laughs> so the, so the, so for me, the the main difference is. You've been through it once before, and I, and the, you, you can't buy that, yeah. can you? You just can't buy that. So having gone through it once before, you know, I think you get a better understanding of how to lay it all out. I think you know a sense of hierarchy on what drawings are better than others. You know what? You know one. This is this is mega technical, mega thingy, but I think it's useful. One thing I figured out between degree and masters was the. Just show one floor plan, one key floor plan, and let the others just kind of sit to the side in, in like, so one to a hundred for your main floor plan. And then all the others, one to 500. Do you remember when you used to try and put all your floor put plans in? Yeah. Try and put everything at the same scale and all that. The masters, you got a real sense of priority. So, you know, one key draw and one key visual and all the other things just kind of, you know, point to it and, and complement. Yeah. Your best sort of. information at eye level as well. 
Oh, there you go. Well remembered, yeah. So, you know, think little techniques like that. You know, things at eye level. You've learned a lesson, haven't you? Yeah. You've learned a lesson from the degree. I, I even I even doubled doubled up on uh, models. You know, we had we had the big um, again, we know we'll cover probably cover this in a little bit more detail a bit, but we made sure didn't we we had a little bit of you know laser cut model, a little bit of hand built model, progress, you know, design progress models, loads of different things going on. So it just got bigger and better, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then I think you just got a bit more a bit more experienced. And you know another one as well that we learned? The cost of the thing. So this is I actually this this might be a might be a bit of an exclusive because I've never heard anyone else say this in the architecture sort of world. You don't need to spend five hundred quid on your presentation. Yeah, we used to do that every every final one, and it. Was someone told us we, we, we. Someone told us it might have been. So cover not, the mic. It was Steve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So as I was going to say, so it might be. It might have been a colleague. It might have been. A, it might have been a friend. It might have even been a tutor. I don't I forget. But there was definitely because in the degree we all pinned up on a um, a piece of foam board uh, mounted with like a um, it had like a bit of a, a laminated, laminated yeah. yeah like a little laminated face like, to it it was like five or six hundred pounds and and then like you haven't got that money as a student subsequently yeah. no one's really does it we probably get proven wrong next week now and everyone's doing it again but well there was a bit of a there was a bit of a trend on framing your stuff which yeah. is cheaper actually mm. if you believe it or not but what we found was it, it just let the work speak for itself as well. Yeah. So in the masters, we we spent a fraction of that money on just good quality paper, but just pinned it up. You know, we, yeah. we it wasn't on big mounted boards or nothing. It was just on good quality paper, good quality printing. So I wouldn't say print it yourself. You definitely go to like a reprographics place because it's just a better quality of print and you know, get all the resolution spots on all that sort of stuff. But we didn't we didn't spend a fraction of what we did in the degree because we yeah. just we just went for like. You looked at the menu in Hobbs, didn't we? We just went, go for that bottom one there. It look, yeah. looks like it'll do the job. Whereas you can just go for a decent level of paper. Yeah. It costs you £100. Pounds. So that, that was a bit of a difference. Yeah. And, 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 sorry, and, and in our personal experience. And then, and then on that, you can roll it up and it doesn't take up like a whole room in your house. Uh, well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, my, my degree stuff's long gone. Yeah, um, mine is. Um, but then, sorry, but then one other one as well, in our experience, so this, this is specific to our university. Some might do it this way, but in our experience as well, in your masters, it went. It moved from group work to individual work, and the it was groups of four. And in the masters, the four years were in. They were facing each other as well. So you you had to kind of speak to the rest of your group as well and try and make your presentations quite complimentary. And we shared the laser cut model. It was, it was one of the mm. best laser cut models in in our year. We, we in our we felt it was anyway. Yeah. And what we did was we we actually curated between the four of us. Okay, well, you show a bit of that, you show a bit of that. And then we made sure that the laser cut model was bang in the centre of the four of them. Lovely. You know what I mean? So yeah, they all yeah. spoke to one another as well. And yeah. that, that was that was good. good. Yeah. Um, so then the, that, that's the degree in the master's um, show sort of covered, if you like. But obviously then you're looking towards the next chapter. And the next chapter is your professional placements uh, in both scenarios. Uh, masters is again a little bit different because you've already worked in a placement probably ninety nine percent of the time before in your in your part one, and then you know you might you might have kept a good relationship. You might you might not know where you're going already during that show, but certainly in your degree show, you're still very green to the industry, aren't you? And and you know you need to get your first placements. First question: Did you guys? take a break before you started looking for work because obviously we've discussed there already you know the little hints and tips you can do to stand out from the crowd in that degree show and, and get, give yourself the best chance of maybe getting a job but did you just want a job straight away well so did, the thing you right? so 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 this is this is a quite a neat little link i think we haven't fully nailed the degree show stuff just yet but it, but i'll stitch it into what you just asked what we didn't do was i don't think we fully explained to everyone the my, in my past experience, I did get my job through the degree show and how I done that was, so we, we touched on preparing little brochures and CVs and stuff like that. One thing I just wanted to mention, you know, was just asking that. It was quite a, um, it was quite a relaxed atmosphere with drinks, you know, the alcoholic kind, <laughs> right? And it was, it was even an evening because obviously they have to allow for people to finish the working day. So it was even an evening. And in my experience, I remember for both of them, the degree and the master's one, 
it was actually as as scary as the prospect is. You're trying to f- find employment and stuff. I, it was quite a nice experience, wasn't it? You know, in terms mm, of yeah. you know, it, there's there's just there's just it bins, big massive bins full of ice and water and uh, and then just bottles of bottles of lager and, and what have you, just in them. And um, it's free for everyone to you know to um, just take advantage of them, what have you. And um, what just 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 around it off, bringing it to the employment stage is. My advice would be to try your best to relax. Definitely have a, have a drink in your hand, you know, have a bit of swag, you know what I mean? A bit of confidence and try and talk to people on on that level, you know, just on, on an equals level, not mm. a not a sort of a, you know, we mentioned about external examiners and stuff. You, 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 your degree show presentation is first judged by external examiners and that's very intimidating. But they're only really there to just check the tutors have marked things correctly. And, you know, if someone's miles off, the, the, you might be able to adjust it a little bit. But generally, it's not too, you know, to worry about too much. But when it's the degree show, it's about just, you know, you, you, you're done. You're in, the, you're in the mixer now. You know, you're, you're in the real world. And you, you've got to almost try and behave like that and just present. You know, like, you know you're there, you're chatting. But it's not like a... A proper presentation. It's like a conversation. You know what I mean. So you you should you know welcome them welcome them in and but try and treat it like a a chat in the pub. You, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. You, you just tell them what your project and the, and what it does and, and and its narrative and all that sort of stuff. But I'm just I'm just trying to paint that picture of people. There. It's a case of just yeah you know it's quite relaxed really. Mm. You know everyone's having a drink. Everyone's having fun. It is it, you know everyone's relieved to to be finished and the vibe is actually nice. It's a really nice vibe as yeah. well. And then, so then to bring that to your question about employment and all that sort of stuff, um, we we both, I think it's fair to say we both wanted a break, but my my personal experience was I was worried that if I took too long of a break, it would jeopardise my employment opportunities. So at the degree show, I was on the hunt yeah. for a job. Yeah. And my preferred practice at that time, so it was my number one practice, I was very lucky to get that, was BDP. They were working on Liverpool one at a time. I could, I, you know, couldn't believe that our city was getting such a such a you know wonderful um, project, such a huge generation project, and I literally was just I did my research on who was attending for BDP. Uh, so they did attend. Didn't, spoke didn't to they them. invite like five or six of us to enter the competition, and that's how they got to know us. Oh you remember? yeah, it was the. But was George that after Gren- the degree show though? Wasn't yeah, it? it was the George Grenfell Baines Award, and that I was think it. it was like you, Zay, me, Kyle, and. Yeah, we, we were invited we because do, of our work at the we degree had, show. We then had to do one single board for a BDP competition and then they basically p- picked their favourites. All ah, right. Yeah. And I think you won 500 quid, didn't you, as well? Yeah, Zay, I didn't. Zay won, I, yeah, I was going to say, I didn't yeah, win it. Zay yeah. won it. Um, so, yeah, so we so we did prepare and, 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 and we did basically go into it looking for employment, really. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, but, but you know what, looking back, Probably could have done with a break, and to be honest, probably wouldn't have jeopardised the the employment opportunity um, on a bigger picture. I I I I always do this. I always put stuff on a pedestal. So I was like, that's my number one choice, and I knew that they only had two placements. Mm. They they made that clear. I don't I don't know. Again, this is what we we need to figure this out next week. Actually, I don't know now how the how it all works in terms of like I mean, I mean like literally today. You know, we're not that old. It was only I would say ten years ago when 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 we were in that. In that position, or maybe maybe a bit longer, but anyway, fifteen. Uh, I think you was it fifteen. Was. Really? Oh. <laughs> I'm still I'm still only twenty. Fifteen. Years, Fifteen. Yeah. Okay, years. so so maybe we, we we do need to refresh ourselves a bit then. But in my in, in my experience, right, we did get a bit of a heads up from we um, we had certain choosers we got on very well with, and we were saying to them, you know, we want to work here, we want to work there. We gave like a top five, a top ten, and I remember them making us aware. Well, they've got certain amounts of placements, they've got certain amounts of placements, all that yeah, sort of yeah. stuff. And then so we started gearing our our, our presentations all, and all that um, towards who we knew was going to turn up. We got familiar with who the individuals were, started pitching to them and all that sort of stuff, but in a friendly way, as I say, not, not too salesy. Yeah. And um, the, the sort of say, yeah, you know, when, when, when um, I know we did get invited to the competition, all that sort of stuff, but because long story short, the sort of say, don't do, when, when can you start? And you know what? You might even, you might even have the opportunity then. You know, when they say, when can you start? I'd even say any chance I can have a bit of a, a bit of a blow. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I was quite lucky. So I got the job in Nightingale, and they were waiting for someone to go back to uni. So I got like they said, you 
can't start till this date. So ah, right. I've got a bit of a break just by default. Okay. So did you not start till like the following September or yeah, something? Pr- yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty much August, September. So yeah. I already had a job anyway, like a part-time job. So it weren't, yeah. it weren't that bad. And then, yeah, I just... How did you end up at Nightingales? Um... As you say, it was fifteen years ago. God, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, question, yeah, I think I just, I, I think I just rang them up and applied. But it, but it, yeah, so it wasn't a result of the degree show, was it? it wasn't no, a I direct think, result. I don't, I don't think they had many, many there. Yeah, that year. Um, and and the yeah. reason I say that, sorry, just, just to queue it up. The reason I say that is mine was roughly speaking. I, I, it was state as, as yeah, Jack said, we got not, invited and stuff. But mine, mine did. Mine was born from the degree show, so people can learn from that. People can learn from your experience, Jack, and um, you did get invited to the competition bit, but then you weren't successful in that process. And then you then were almost like, well, I've got, I've got to, I've got to now. Go yeah, out on it's not game over at that point. You just, yeah. you're then applying. But I think they then asked me, BDB, you and Zay were working there, weren't you? And then, yeah. The, was it Richard? He, he said, we've got a placement for you now, but it was like two months into being at Nightingale. Yeah. So, so I, I, yeah, I, I was, happy, I was right. happy then. Yeah. And I didn't want to move. So, so just in terms of time frames, because it is interesting this though. So the BD thing, BDP thing didn't happen initially. Did you make start making them phone calls straight away? Because I think, I suppose the thing we're getting at here is it's two pronged, isn't it? You probably are due a rest when you're, yeah. when you're finished and, and the degree show's over. But the pressure is is always there, isn't it? That I need to get a job here because if I don't get one, I'm falling behind. Yeah. So it's it's, it's that pressure. So I suppose it's just giving everyone a bit, a bit of faith that it, it the pressure is there because you put it on yourself almost, isn't it? The pressure yeah. was there as yeah. well because it was a global economic meltdown at that point. Yeah, so, well, 2008. 2008, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah I can't believe I haven't told So yes, yeah. you could probably count on one or two hands the amount of people who did get employment from our year like yeah. straight, straight away, away yeah. think everyone near enough did eventually but yeah it wasn't probably like it it has been in recent years where everyone can get employment and there's opportunity out there it was it was competitive wasn't it and yeah you, you, so I, I think jogging me memory i think I, I i did just start applying straight away yeah and at how did point. you apply? Because I've I've got I've had a bit of stick on it Instagram yeah, for, we'll for talking about hand delivering, which we will we will get on to. I think um, so. I didn't hand deliver, but I was ringing them up and basically asking were they open to the idea of like part one placement. If they say no, then you know it's one off your list, don't you? I think I had a big big list and then a narrow. So it you down. inquired whether there was an opening. First. Yeah, yeah. That's very important. That. Yeah. So you rang up and just simply inquired: Is there an opening? Yeah. And, and then I stepped it up. So I had a list and I was like, these are the ones I want to work for. And mm-hmm. then, you know, I, luckily I got one that was high up my list. And yeah. then I got two interviews based on that method. So I asked them, did they have a placement? They said, potentially, yeah. So I sent me CV and my work, got called for interviews, got two jobs. And I got a better vibe from the one I took, but it was a lot less money. And yeah, and then... Yeah, so don't name another one then. I, I forget, yeah. but just don't name yeah. another one just yeah. in case. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it weren't even it, it weren't even the money thing. It was I just got a better vibe for the office set up and I went in and like the one where he ended up looked like a nice environment. People were friendly when it turned up, whereas the other one I didn't even get to see the office. I just got ushered into a back room and yeah. interviewed effectively. And then I yeah. think one of our other mates then got a job there and the world was tougher at that stage and um, they let him go like two months in, so it was it was ultimately the right decision to take the less money. Yeah, but it was sort of based on loads of factors that I'd recognised. It was a public sector mm. practice that with with a lot of frameworks, and and I was aware the world was well, uh, melting you know, down at that stage. Whereas that, the other one was private sector, so yeah. I was like, that that's probably I'm, I'm gonna get better experience and it's a safer place to be in at this moment in time the, the world melting down and, and that point and you and you, you even said the words the world was a tougher place then it, it, during that it's good advice this at the moment more, because more competitive it's, place it's, i don't know well no so what, what, what i'm saying is at the moment in the current economic situation that we're finding ourselves in with the war in ukraine covid all of that type of stuff over the last cost couple of, of years cost of living crisis in the uk at the moment we, we could we could very well end up in that situation again or or, or 
companies in our sector might be looking at the world in the same way yeah. they were in 2008. So all these tips that yeah. we're going through at the morning, they're even more important. I don't, I don't think we're quite there though, given like obviously you do a lot more networking than me and Adam and you've been to do with some of the bigger, more prominent directors in the city and they're desperate for staff yeah. at the moment, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, so yeah. that wasn't the vibe in 2008. It was, it, it was like you, it was... Really no, it's difficult, few, it's wasn't it? Between. And, and, and a point to touch on there as well is the thing I was getting nervous of was there was only a handful of people, as Jack said, who got employed straight away. And I started thinking, and this is true, this this is just facts, that if, if I don't get a job within 12 months, there's going to be another year graduating. Yeah. Who are looking for jobs? It just slows the journey down, doesn't it? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, but it, but it, but it adds another thirty people into the into the mix, and yeah. uh, not just thirty. There's there's two really good architecture schools in Liverpool, so there's call it thirty a year. There's there's another sixty people then. Yeah. There's only five got a job last year, and there's another sixty who, who who are coming out this year as well. So you know you just got to be careful of that. I think you got to be mindful of that. At that time as well, I was in the mindset of not having a job wasn't an option, whereas I think some people sort of settled into it and they were just they went back to their part-time jobs didn't they whereas you can, you can do your master there was a point when you couldn't do your masters though wasn't i'm sure in years gone yeah by. but they changed it because of the, because, the situation because of the situation so you, you had to have employment before you could go back and do your masters that isn't a thing anymore now you can go back and then there's an understanding that before you qualify as a registered architect you've still got to make up two years in practice but you can do that now after your master's where did you used to be one after your degree, one after your master's, and that's that was your two in total. Yeah. Now the, 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 there's an acceptance that you can just plug your two at the end. My, mine was a targeted approach because you you obviously you you got a job at, off the back of the degree show, so it was a quicker process for you. But obviously, I didn't. So I wanted to stay in Liverpool for like personal and family reasons. But then, as a month went on, I started like widening my net and was then went to Manchester, Chester, and then I was willing to probably go to London if I needed to. So, as I say, not having employment weren't an option, so I'd have probably went as far as I needed to at that time to get it because London was in an economic bubble, wasn't it? Yeah. The, the, the work was still... In your opinion there. then, you know, considering the thing you've just mentioned about being able to do the Masters, if you couldn't have found a job architecture specific so you couldn't get a job in a practice do you think you would have gone and got a job anywhere let's say tesco or somewhere like that for, for, just for an example you know an everyday well, job well, well i did <laughs> I, I did as a default i already had a job in so, that arena so. Would, so but the question i was getting to was would you have done that for a year and then tried to go back to do start your masters no. or would you have in your head been like I'm only doing this until I can get a job. Yeah, I was all in because I had Adam in my target who had a job. So I wanted to stay on a level playing field with him yeah. at, at that moment in time. Well, it would have been sad, wouldn't it, if we didn't go back together? Yeah, and, and, and I wanted yeah. to go back and do the experience with, the with, with Adam and the yeah. same group. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. same year. That's interesting, the same yeah. year as well, because there were people that done two years out and then they're in the year below, aren't they, then when they go yeah. back? Yeah. And that's, a, that's something to just consider. I haven't got really an opinion on that, but... It's just it's just something to something to consider really. Mm. Oh, I had I had um, you know, you, you know you're explaining about oh sorry you was, that was it you were saying about um, would you've got a job anyway to just sort of get you through and then go back and Jack was saying you know no wanted to be an architect and stuff just a little bit of advice is the reason I wanted to make sure I had a job was I didn't want to go back to uni at a disadvantage mm. skill wise. Um. And again, I know we're focused on a degree, but I suppose I suppose it's a bit more, a bit more applicable, isn't it? Really, to 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 why we're doing this topic, I suppose. And um, I, I'd even I'd even if, if you can't get a job in an architecture practice, even try and keep it in in a, in a sort of a window. Like we were talking about, um, one of our friends worked at a architectural model making place, and that was. That yeah. taught them something. That was quite yeah, cool. Yeah. You know, it teaches a bit of design because you've seen these different projects. It's teaching you a skill that's relevant to the industry. And I also, on my um, on my time with BDP, I done the odd lunch time at a really top CGI company, and I learned loads. You know what I mean? Just the odd lunch time. It was, you know, it was only a handful, but 
you know, I learned loads. It was just, it was just, so, it was a an amazing experience. And looking back, I, you probably learned something there as well. You know, you're, you're CGI artists, they get to see some of the best projects, don't they? Yeah. Because it's all, it's, it's all, it's all the bigger names, the bigger budgets. Yeah. Inherently, in it that, that that need the CGI, you know, proper agencies. So I think it, a little bit of advice that if if you can't get an arch, like an architecture role out and out, you still want to keep it within the year. You want to stay in the same year. You want to go back x amount of time. I'd say try it under yeah. visualization studios or model making studios and that sort of stuff. Yeah, you'll yeah. still go back then with an improved skill set. It's still industry specific, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. There's one aim um, actually that that, that that I just want to quickly bring up. There was a a, a person who contacted us recently. Um, he contacted Studio RBA. And uh, he was actually someone who had ended up working in a in a job outside of the industry after he uh, passed his degree, and he'd been working in that job for three years because he couldn't find a placement. And he he had wrote me an email to say, "Are you taking anyone on?" And actually, in his email, very honestly, he said, "I'm nervous about applying because I passed my degree three years ago, so I've been out of the industry for three years." He said, but I really want to try and get a job, but I'm nervous that my chances will be, you know, severely well, much lower than someone who's just coming out of the degree because they, you know, they, you know, we, we talk about like match fitness or whatever. I was going to say, yeah, I thought, I thought you were going to stitch it into that. Yeah. So actually what I what I thought, so I sat in my chair that day and I was thinking, oh yeah, actually, I, what do I think about this? And, and what I actually thought was someone who's been in employment for three years and, and has been able to, to maintain that is probably a good employee. Yeah. So... And, and the soft skills that you can learn in any job, you know, whether, you know, it, his job was actually a retail environment. So dealing with uh, the public day it's and day out and stuff, isn't it, it, gives, which, it gives you different which skill you sets. Really need. So I actually wrote back to him and, and at the time we weren't, we, we didn't have a place, unfortunately, but I actually wrote back to him and said, do not be put off by the fact that you haven't been within the architecture industry for however much amount of time. Get your CV ready find your degree work and, and get a bit of a portfolio together. Even get your, yourself back match fit, if you like, by, you know, do do a one-off uh, design for, for a house or something yourself. Create your own project. No, no, so, so, design something and then, and then update your portfolio. Get, get a few more examples. Competition entries. Comp yeah, even that. And then I wrote back to him and said, yeah, so don't be put off in the slices. Unfortunately, we didn't have one, but keep applying because you someone will take you even despite you, you that time. You slip back off. into muscle memory as well because... Are we allowed to name names? Well, we can Depends cut this out. <laughs> well, well, Steph, for example, who used to work for us, she she like she got a degree and then didn't do a master's for about 10 years, didn't she? And she was great. She was a great employee, talented and skilled. And it, it just shows you can revert back to muscle memory. Yeah. And you don't lose it effectively. Yeah. It just takes you a bit of getting used to, doesn't it, being back? Yeah. Back in the, but then in touching the on, on match fitness, we t we use the analogy of like, you know, a, a bit of a football analogy, isn't it? Where if if a player's injured for a certain amount of time and then they get back in, they need a few sets of 90 minutes, don't they, to then get back yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, you're not and in the, the best state of work. And there is that in, in our game where when we come back off holiday, we need two weeks stop, we to kind of just get back into the rhythm of things. So there is, that is a thing, that is a thing. But I think you are right overall. If you're good enough, you're good enough, aren't yeah. you? And, and 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 you, know, you talk about all the other skills that you're learning in other sectors, other industries, all that sort of stuff. Celebrate it, as you say. Yeah. Say I've worked in retail, and that's taught me to be good at time management mm. and dealing with the public. Yeah. You still deal with a, a, a section of the public. You deal with other consultants. Mm. Clients are still the public to you. Are they? They're yeah. still, still strangers. All that sort of yeah. stuff. So life yeah, isn't point. perfect. You mightn't be able to go straight yeah. into employment for various reasons, and yeah. It, don't let that get you down. It's yeah. We're, we're talking about our experience that that won't be relevant to probably 50, 60 percent of the people. No, but then obviously the purpose of this then is to try and give a, a bit of advice, isn't it? You know, you know, you know. So beyond our own experience, what 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 could you advise? But what's good is mine and your experiences in some instances are quite different, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. but then they eventually align, didn't they? Like, yeah, yeah. I think they do, yeah, they always do it in the end. We've yeah. got different approaches, but. Um, yeah. So at the, the, the point of that one, though, is it, no one should be worried. You know, like uh, at the end of the day, if you're ready now and you want to really get a job straight away, top practice, and that's your aim, great, fantastic, go for it. If you want a few months out, take the summer off or whatever, and then you want to start applying, great, you know, go for it. But just be prepared for, you know, there might be as few spaces gone. And then if you're someone 
like that guy who contact, contacted me who'd been out for three years, don't let it put you off. When you're ready to come back, just make sure that you've got you know a, a strong portfolio, get your CV ready and turn that into a strength as you just mentioned. And then, and then shameless plug, but you know, that's what we're here for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you, if, but if you are out of action, and you and, and and you're not learning maybe some of these skills, then that's where the academia, like the actual platform, is important because we've got courses on on everything. It's only growing as well. Um, interior design going going today, <laughs> and um, what what a what a good place to sort of keep your hand in. Yeah. In in you know, you know keep, keeping your skills sharp. We're now in the process of vetting some of our older courses and and topping them up. Um, so I'm speaking to some of our, you know, obviously we create some of our own and some of them are guest tutors. I've just had a little conversation with, oh, maybe, you know, we could add five lessons now. Yeah. You know, new releases of Revit, new releases of Ryan, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So we're making sure that we're keeping our stuff up to date with the latest stuff. So then you can rely on the fact that then if, if you are having time out for whatever reason, you can still kind of stay sharp, can't yeah. you? In, in, in that regard as well. There are other, you know, there are other, there are other places. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's yeah. not just us, there are, there are others yeah. out there, but you know, t- t- that's that's what we're here for, isn't it? To to help you while you're on the journey, but also if you've been out, you know, c- come and revisit some of our courses, get yourselves up to speed with the, the latest softwares and, and, and you're ready, you know, by the time you, you want to apply. That's it. Um, let's get into the hand delivery uh, discussion and, and, and by that, <laughs> you know, I'll expand on that actually. Let's get into how to set yourself apart. So, you know, if you are that that person who straight away, you know, let, let yourself BDP or whatever the top practice is in your area or, or one that suits you the most, you identify it, you want to go for it. How are you getting it above someone else? Are we, that, are we in the 10 tips yet or not? Is not this, yet. Is, is this so the, we'll, we'll roll into that from this. This is the preamble of the 10 tips. This is the last point. It's, it's referring to Adam's... Uh, Previous YouTube so, post as well, no, isn't no, it? No, in, in, Instagram post. Oh, was it Instagram? Yeah. So yeah, I got a bit. I got Mr. A bit, Controversy. I got, yeah, yeah, I got a bit. Of, I got a bit of a, a bit of heat in there. So, yeah. so that was you were explaining Jordan that that, that that Instagram post, and if you haven't seen it, check out the Instagram. And no, you'll, don't, you'll, don't. you'll see the comments. Yeah. Say something nice. It is fun. <laughs> <laughs> but all you were doing with that post though was you were identifying a method to set yourself apart, and 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 that was one point. One thing you said you can do is hand deliver your CV. So again, this, every and needs context. So, so it's a general point that, but with smaller practices like ourselves, the reason you put that forward is we love that. We love yeah. that, that, that personal touch of someone coming in, already knowing your name. I want to speak to Adam. I, uh, you know, and I'm such and such. I've just finished my degree. I really love a job at your practice. I love this project. I love that project. And that shows confidence, it independence. Is- all that sort of stuff. All yeah. that stuff versus, you know, now obviously, and Jack Jack likes to sometimes point to employment law on this type of stuff because you have got to be careful and that a lot of stuff now, especially with the bigger companies, it needs to be anonymous processes and things like that for certain roles and stuff. But it, it, yeah, so, so to avoid discrimination, so 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 just, and sorry to cut you up there, but just to jump in on that, the the purpose of the video, the, the, and it was, yeah, who the thought, 59 seconds of the thing, Keith, but, um, the purpose of the video was anti, anti kind of the email that says, dear Sarah or madam. Yeah. That's the, that, so, so yeah. just, you know, just to draw a line. That's the top and bottom of it, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. So it's anti that, right? Yeah. So if someone sends me an email that says, dear Sarah or madam, I, I want a job. Yeah. It, it gets deleted. Yeah. Right? It gets deleted. We, we, the three of us are directors, so the three of us get different sets of emails and stuff. If it comes to me, and it says, dear Sarah or madam, right? My email gives you my name. My email address yeah. gives you my name, right? So if it says, dear Sarah or madam, they're not for us. Yeah. Such cause... a diva, isn't he? No, I know, yeah. No, no, the most the... emotional. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But the reason they're not for us is because that's lazy. That it is. A, it's a lazy approach. So that's what I'm saying. It's anti that. Yeah. However, what I, what I would accept is that, sadly, we, we, we do live in a world where... The especially in architecture and construction, it's not the most diverse industry. It's it's not, sadly. Funnily enough, there's a little bit of naivety on my part because I, I genuinely didn't see that as a potential. So when Jack's talking about uh, when he's met, when we were, we've obviously chatted about it and we're talking, you know, talking about the the anonymity of an application, it's to completely eliminate the chance of discrimination. Yeah. Now, but so my naivety is that wouldn't enter my mind anyway. But that wasn't the point you were making, to clarify, was it? So the point is, look, guys, this is me. Look at me, effectively. I, I, I'm 
I'm above all the other people around me. Probably haven't worded that. No, no, but you're <laughs> yeah. talking about standing out. Yes, yeah, standing so my out. My message was standing out, but it was anti-blanket email. Yeah, that yeah. was a key thing. Yeah, it was yeah. anti-blanket email. But what I'm saying is, now that we've we've took took to some of the comments, and some of the comments were very very productive as well. You know, what I mean, we, we ended up in a, a, a decent discussion as well, which I'll always encourage. Good or bad, really, because it's, it's, be, I, I want people to see these comments because it, it, it almost creates another um, tranche of content, doesn't it? In a, yeah, in a way. Yeah. Um, but my point is that yes, you know, the the sorry, the thing the thing I, I've since acknowledged is I understand the concept that you, you know now you're almost I think you are discouraged now to not show a picture because that can breed a certain level of discrimination. Not, not about race or anything like that. I just mean, you know, some, someone might be put off by someone's appearance, which again, to me, is unbelievable that anyone would do that. Yeah. But I understand that whether that would happen or not, the process of an anonymous application, um, it rules out the chance of that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I do understand that. I do appreciate that. But to just turn it on said a little bit, I think, I think that's hard for an employer. Well, to, to to work through that. No, but I I I think there's almost something being missed here. Doesn't matter all, whether or not the applic the applicant is anonymous. To stand out, you, you can still address the email to Adam instead yeah. of the Sir or Madam, yeah, yeah. and you can still get your personality across. So the the biggest thing is, as an employer, you don't want something that you know is being blanket sent to every practice. Yes, that's the Because exactly. you know they just want a job and they're not bothered about you as a practice. You want to feel like, uh, and it's crazy to say this, but even as a practice employing someone, you want to feel loved by them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're always the best employees because you, you know that they, they like the practice to begin with. You can get that across in so many ways. So as I say, we wouldn't mind if someone knocked at our door and hand-delivered. We'd be fine with that. All the practices, you can't do it. They might have security on the door. They might have a secretary that you can't get past, etc. In those instances... Busy directors, I'm sorry to think, but one of yeah. the comments or one, or one of the threads was they were sort of saying that you can't assume if you doorstep someone, you can't assume that they would have the time, time of day. To see it. That's, a, that's a fair Very point. Another well, one, that's yeah. a fair point. Yeah. Whereas, again, from my personal experience, I would, unless I wasn't there, yeah. right, but I would make the time personally. Yeah. So, again, so that's where I've been maybe been a little bit blinkered yeah. in the, if someone If someone went to the effort to knock on our door, I would give them at least. 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So have a little sit down and go through minutes. it. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, Jack's I'm, giving you five. I, that means that's, I'd have to stay another half an hour at the end of the day. The degree but shows Jack could probably have a stopwatch on. You're about go, to write go. off like two weeks ago. Yeah. No. If, if, if they were queuing up outside. <laughs> 30 minutes each. Then, yeah, anyway, but what, what I'm saying is oh, I, 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 would, I would, but, but then, as you say, translate that to a star architect practice. Yeah. Norman Foster's not going to sit down with it. No. <laughs> so, so then to bring it back, and again, the whole thing is about setting yourself apart. You know your portfolio that you're sending? Don't send the same portfolio. Get the company's logo that you want to work with. Get your name. You know, Mr. Yeah. Smith, working at branding. Studio RBA, put the branding on it, incorporate yeah. the colours into your portfolio, yeah, make yeah. it look like some, like it almost belongs at their Photoshop practice. Photoshop yourself on that, their website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that far, but but yeah, th those yeah, are the things. Though, and, yeah. and, 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 and again, like then if an email comes through addressed to you with uh, an attachment that doesn't just say, you know, Mr. Smith's portfolio that says Mr. Smith working at Studio RBA or something like that, you know, with your, your, with your, with your brand name on it, all that stuff. Well, a bit clickbaity. You, you, know, you know, you can almost clickbait the, the subject a little bit, couldn't you? Yeah. Um, the general point just is make yourself stand out and it, it doesn't have to be knock at the door, but find a way, find a way to get your personality across and to stand out. Creating, Don't just blank so, so it Creating email. videos. I love the comment, sorry to butt in, where the lad said, you got to restrain an order. Yeah, some of them are little, some of them are little stars. Yeah, definitely check out the Instagram yeah. posts because it was great. Him. No, no, some, some of them were funny. So the, po the point is, stand out and there are other means. So I say, my, my one, you know, smaller practice, my personal experience, I, I do get impressed by that personal touch, but... There are other methods, website, video, you know, whatever else. There are loads of other mediums to make it stand out. And as you rightly said, make it specific to that yeah. practice. Yeah. And it'll just feel a little bit more time's gone into it. Yeah. And that translates into an immediate impression. Yeah, 100%. Okay, let's get into the top 10 tips then. Um, quick fire. Yeah, so we, we are running out of time. So we will have yeah. to be a little bit quicker than this than we, we wanted to be. But we can elaborate on this uh, on the no, website. But I, I think the 10 points are going to be 
Absolutely spot on. So anyway. I'll just refer to my notes yeah, that yeah, I prepared yeah. earlier. Yeah. Um, we don't script this, do we? So, so top ten tips, and this is for when you start in the new practice. So from so, either degree or, or master show, that transition into practice is yeah. the main message of this podcast. Thing, right? Things to live by. So point number one: be humble. So here, here we're, we're talking about don't whether you got a first in your degree, whether you're the best, and you and, and and you know you're the best in your year, and you're stepping into practice, and you feel like right, I'm going to show these what I'm about. Cut all that. You're at the start of your journey. You're at the start of your journey. Loads of senior architects, they've all been there before. Yeah, be humble. Jack? I agree. Yeah, yeah. 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 Go on. <laughs> Next. Well, this is a good quick fire. Go on. The second one, immerse yourself in the office culture. So again, Jack, you can, you've got a perfect example of this. Well, yeah, so don't just sit in the corner. Keep your ears open, listening to conversations, what everyone's having. And yeah, do extracurricular stuff. We It was quite a social office where I worked. Ended up running a half marathon. Yeah, because the office was jumping and, off the live building. Jumping off the live yeah. building yeah. Yeah. in a harness. We, we yeah. Went sailing, didn't we? We, Did went, we went. Yeah. Well, I just. To I just, be fair, you I just, just tag on to all my stuff. <laughs> I just used the benefit from all this stuff. But but yeah. So immerse yourself in the cult in the office culture, and we just directed it there about don't sit in the corner and don't just fall into the trap of sort of getting in headphones on and just hunkering down and just doing your work. In that first twelve months is crucial, isn't it? Yeah. In engaging with others and learning from others because there's just so many minds that you There'll can There'll be conversations into. you hear on the phone that you don't think are important for you to listen to, but they are. Yeah. And you can't do that if you're not listening. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great point. Um, the next one is show independence. And, and, and this is, what this refers to is if there's something you don't know, and we'll get into. You should always ask when you when you don't know. Let's what, combine if, if these two points because yeah. But the, so it's twofold. So the first one is you should always show independence and try and find the solution yourself first. So so so, and, and me and you get equally annoyed by this because I know you do as well. If someone asks you a question and they could have googled it first, hmm. right? That's not to discourage the question. Yeah. But if you could have got the answer yourself and then and then and then kind of work to that, well, that's better for everyone, really, isn't it? Yeah. So not so just Google as well, by the way. The phone. Utilize the phone. phone. There's and, always well, someone can ring them and find someone out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Su subject to the the internet's not always right. People yeah. should remember. For example, as a part one and part two, there could be ten things that day that you don't remotely know the answer to. If you find the answer to five and then say, Look, I've found five, can you help me with the other five? That's a structured way to do it all in one hit. Don't just keep calling people over every time. Yeah, because people then yeah, don't want to help yeah, you. Yeah, so they? like, yeah, you just got to show it, that. It, it, it opens it up for a bit more of a meaningful discussion then. Yeah. When you've shown a bit of effort initially, and as Jack said there, you kind of compiled the list, so you've tried to get mm. on with it and stuff. And then once you get to a point where you're like, no, no, I can't continue until I've dealt with this, you can call someone over, have a good session. That I think that, that shows a good attitude, and I think it'll encourage a better one. Yeah. As so, a response. So, so then the next one is speak up when you don't understand. And that doesn't contradict the show independence because what we're saying is once you should show independence and always try first. Yeah. But then if you do not know the answer, or even if you've found an answer but you don't fully understand it, you've got to go and, go and yeah, ask. Yeah. So yeah. don't guess as well as the same sort of yeah. thing. It, guessing and getting it wrong is a million times worse than asking the question in the first instance. Yeah. And then just to build on that, because one of my little faults when I was younger was uh, when someone fed me a brief, I just used to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just just to not embarrass myself or thought I was embarrassed myself. And then once that senior went away, I'd go, oh, I've got no idea what they asked me. Yeah. During a briefing session, is anything you're unsure of? Raise it. That's the time to ask. Yeah. No yeah. such thing as a stupid question. Yeah. There, there isn't, there isn't. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Don't do it in client meetings though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not in front of a client. Um, the next one is never make excuses. So again, this is something that's not easy to do, especially when you're a part one. You know, you, you sometimes find yourself in an environment where you're already being dictated to a little bit. And then if someone calls you out on either missing the deadline or making a mistake on a drawing, you sometimes initially, your first thought is, oh, this isn't my fault. Cut that straight away. Never make excuses. If someone comes at you and you've missed the deadline or you've made a mistake on your drawing, own it. Yeah. Yeah, own it. And, and again, you know, we were discussing earlier that nine times out of 10, if you own it, you, it won't go any further. Yeah. Because the next step is to then look at a solution. If you start disagreeing on who's done what and all that sort of stuff, you, 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 you're just putting the solution it's, further it's away. It's irrelevant. So, yeah. yeah, so as you say, accept the responsibility. It's never, it's never you know, that big of a deal. And again, you get to a solution better that shows maturity, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But the key thing is, 
if 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 you're going to miss a deadline as well, put your hand up and say, you know what, I need more time as yeah, well. Let's yeah, take or responsibility. I need more people, like yeah. anticipate yeah. it. Yeah, before yeah. So it's take about to that happen. responsibility, yeah. no matter what stage in the career, and you'll get respected for it, yeah. and you'll get more support for I it. I think you learn quicker as well by not making excuses. Yeah, yeah. because you, you just meet it head on, and you, as you say, you get to that solution. Quicker. Absolutely. Bad um, news is best saved early. Yeah, that that's is a, a lovely one. Yeah. In our office. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the next point is always remember quality over speed. So again, yeah, this this sort of speaks to the one about being humble as well. Is you sometimes you, you you want to try and please, don't you? So you want to try and get things done quick. So give me another task or whatever. That's not what we're looking for from part ones and the, and part two as well. You want them to take the time and know that the job's being done right. Yeah, uh, yeah, and and we would rather. I don't mean wrong. We'd rather it was on time and good, but but not at the cost of quality. So we would rather it was a week late and done properly. Yeah, and 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 we've yet to have a junior in our studio that has got that yeah. early doors, yeah. quality first, accuracy first, and then the speed will come just by getting into that habit. Yeah. Because it then takes an extra week to... To fix it. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so, yeah. yeah. Spot on. Um, the next one is a sort of a, a, around pressure and pressure on yourself is expect things to take twice as long. Yeah. So every time you're given a task, you're going to think, right, I'll get this done in a couple of days or whatever. It is always going to take twice as long. In this studio, things change all the time. You might have to learn a new software in the studio, so you need a week getting to grips with that first and all that. Just taking that pressure off yourself. Yeah. Or it's a moving environment, so you could be on that job and someone gives you something else to do and you have to balance other stuff. It's not... It's not always perfect that you're on one thing, is it? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, a couple of little extra points. You know, you can hit a deadline partially. You can you can deliver some bits and say, you know what, the other stuff took me longer. Yeah. That's yeah. not too bad. And we're talking about transition into practice. So I don't think you'll let, at this point, you're not seeing clients. You talk, We're talking about your relationship with a senior in the studio. Give yourself twice as long. It'll take the pressure off. That means asking for another week rather than one week. You know, so asking yeah. for two, all that sort of stuff. Um, and if you are speaking to others, yeah, you, you can just give yourself more breathing space by just not committing to a silly deadline. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So that, 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 more often than not, that's internal. And you just give yourself that more space and it minimizes the room for error. Yeah, as well. Spot on. Um, the question why should be your favorite question. So not in an annoying way, let's get that out there. Yeah. But why should be your new favorite word in a sense? Because you need to understand why you're doing things. So you might be really good in a certain program and one of your seniors comes over and goes, I need this reconfiguring and stuff. And you might just be quiet and just go, okay, I can draw that, no problem. You need to understand why. If they're changing apartment layouts, it might be because there's a new regulation, new building yeah. regulation that you need to adhere yeah. to. You need to know that. So don't just blindly follow tasks either. Ask why. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, you're not yeah. learning then, you're just repeating and I think that's most prominent when you're doing detail. So you do move into detailing after your master's and stuff. And, you know, understand that every line is, some of it's in sections, some of it's in elevation, some of it's structural, some of it's not, some of it's a fixing. Really understand exactly what you're drawing rather than just, as you say, just copying a detail. Yeah, yeah. spot on. Um, everything you do is important. And this one is to do with sometimes the, the, the profession is not as glamorous. You know, you might find yourself doing ceilings or, or, or doing and you know, sort of window and door schedules. You might be on them for, for two weeks across a, a range of jobs or whatever. And it's not fantastic work, but it is so important. And that's the thing to always maintain when you're doing, yeah. when you're having those weeks where you feel a bit, well, oh, this has been boring. And you'd be surprised after you've drawn, uh, I say my, my first completed task was a handful of ceilings in a high, you know, like a massive high school. And um, at the time drawing it, I was like, this is boring. But then when I saw the ceiling panels built, I was made up. Yeah, so yeah. you say everything's important. And Jack, what's your motto on that? There's no such thing as a bad task, just a bad attitude. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Put that one and, in. And just yeah. take pride in If you're take drawing toilets, yeah. make yeah. that the best drawing toilet. That's spot on. That's done. how you make it exciting. Always yeah, think, yeah. even if it's a competition for yourself, you know, yeah, like that's what I, I do. I gamify yeah, every drawer. Spot I'm doing. on. Uh, and then the last, last but not least, is the uh, biggest piece of advice I think is don't give up. Yeah. You know, it is hard. Not every practice is great. You know, uh, it's, it, there's going to be project is great. Yeah, every client be experiences is great. Experiences that you hate. Colleagues and, stuff like that. and all that. There's, there's loads of things that it's, can get in the way. It's a big learning curve, but it's the profession you've chosen. It's what you've studied. Don't turn your back on it because of a rough six months. Things will get better. Uh, there is always the chance to work on a great project with a great client. So, 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 so my my little um, closing thing is, 
it, it is worth it because there is such a thing as the perfect job and the perfect client. There is. And we've we've just finished a really nice high-end home. And it was almost, very almost a perfect project. I won't explain why, but it was almost a perfect project. The client was unbelievable, really good budgets, all that sort of stuff, really relaxed and stuff, but, but equally direct. And we're still on that journey, aren't we, as a practice? We're striving for a better quality of client, better quality of project. And I think we're almost there with that. Yeah. And we are having more fun in the studio than ever before, all that sort of stuff. And that's because we're working through that process. Yeah. And as a employee, because we're talking from a director's perspective, but as an employee, there is definitely that practice out there that will suit you down to the ground. And every single day will be an absolute joy because our, the potential as an architect is is endless in it. Yeah. So that's, you know, don't give up because it's worth it. Yeah, spot on. Right, that brings us to the end. Thanks as always, Good. gents. If you've liked this episode, please hit like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out the socials, which will be tagged below. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.